So the kicker climb, it is real and it's here at Eurobike. So today I'm behind the scenes having a quick preview before the unveiling tomorrow. Let me take you back to when I first jumped on a smart trainer and a lot of other people encounter this as well. When they first get on a smart trainer, and they hit that first hill and the resistance kicks in. I had that all over again, but wasn't the only the resistance kicking in with this. The gradient change, that was cool. It was a welcome relief. Now, when I talk about relief, it wasn't just because it's fun, because it's new, it's an innovative. It's a relief on the sit bones, something I never thought about with this. Now with this, when you're jacking your bike up with some yellow pages, as I've done in the past, to simulate climbing, it's a bit of a relief on the hands and you know, recruits the different muscle groups. Just feels like you're going up a hill. It feels a little bit more like going up a hill. This thing, that was the wow factor. It was the pressure points on the saddle. That was what got me here. Now it's not my saddle, but it's a standard road bike saddle. That changed. As soon as I went down, I sort of moved forward a little bit and it took the pressure off those sit points. Indoors, you're sitting, smashing, grinding away those sit bones in the same spot all the time. And you, know, you sort of move around and getting out of the saddle every now and then. With this moving up and down as you ride along, that's the key for me. That was the key thing. It was because it changed my sit bones and where I was sitting on the bike, it took the pressure off those pressure points. Well, it means, I guess, at the end of the day, we can spend more time indoors. That's a good thing for me. Good thing for a lot of people watching too. But I guess that's one point that stops people riding indoors, maybe even riding indoors longer than they would like to. If you've got the time that you just get uncomfortable in the saddle, this thing may actually change that. My first impression of this unit was, where's my front wheel gone? You're taking my bike and removing components from it. It's no different, to be honest. You've got two contact points here and here, same with the mount points on here, and the ground. So it's the three contact points that's identical. Now it's a little hard to judge the size of this unit, but I thought I'd use a front wheel to show you the difference in size. So it's no taller than a standard front wheel. It takes up less space as well. I had a few questions I put to Chip and the team, and here's the responses that I got from that. First of all, when you're outdoors and you're riding up a hill, your pivot axis is pretty much the center bottom bracket, or the center of where you're sitting on the bike. So the back goes down a little bit, the front goes up a little bit. Because this pivot's at the rear, is the simulation taking into account that with the pivot point? The answer is yes. So 10% is a 10% based on the pivot point of this. Speaking of the pivot point, this is why initially the compatibility is only with the Kicker 17 and the Snap 17 because they have rear moving pivot points and they won't chew out your carbon frame bike or any bike that you put on it. It also wasn't ruled out, a retrofit solution to the Kicker 16, maybe the Kicker original. And also working with other trainer manufacturers, it's absolutely a possibility, that's the information that I had. But it's all about them being compatible with this unit, moving up and down and not ruining bikes, because it's the last thing they want to do. All the Kicker climb shots we've seen to date show a standalone unit. I can confirm it does have a power pack, just like a normal smart trainer. So with a 20% gradient up and only a 10% down, I did put that to the guys. I thought it was the front brake and there's not enough real estate here for it to put the nose down. Turns out the main reason was the pedals itself. There's not enough crank clearance, which makes sense. So in regards to response times, there's no lag whatsoever from the visual to what you're seeing and feeling through the handlebars. As soon as it dropped down through those S's before, I fell forward and as soon as it hit that front bump, going back up, it was there straight away. So there's no lag to worry about here. That was very cool and one thing I did want to try. As mentioned before, because this does replace your front wheel with exactly the same contact points, then stability is the same. I was out of the saddle, no problems whatsoever. Seemed to work just fine. So there it is, my first ride and a few impressions of the new Kicker Climb. I guess in short, you've got to try it yourself. As soon as these are in shops to demo, get yourself into a shop, have a go, just to see what it's all about, because I think you've got to get on it and try it to uh, get that wow factor and put a smile back on your face indoors. Again, thanks to Wahoo for inviting me in today for a preview of this, and uh, stay tuned for more from Eurobike. Thanks for watching.